What's going on guys? My name is Abner. Welcome to the channel. Uh, today, I'm trying to go ahead and do something different. And I want to go ahead and do a review, which I don't normally do. I want to do a, rev a review for Cyberpunk 2077, the game that came out about two months ago. The PS4 and the Xbox and the PC. The new version has not come out yet, which is for the PS5 and Xbox Series X. But I did play this one. And I finished it about a month ago. About a month ago I finished it. Let me turn on the volume. Jesus. Well, I can hear some music. Right here. Finished it about a month ago. Uh, and I, I gotta say, I, I didn't experience too many problems with this game when it came to the glitches and bugs that the game, you know, everybody was losing their minds on the internet about the bugs and the glitches. They need to fix it, they need to fix it. But, I don't think it was too bad. But we're gonna leave the bugs and glitches for later, we're gonna talk about the good stuff. And then we're gonna talk about the bad stuff. So, good stuff. I don't know how many, I didn't really script this up. I'm just gonna talk about it. The characters, great characters. Good story, short, but good. The music, awesome. The atmosphere and vibe of the city, great. Uh, the animations and or, you know, the graphics look good. Uh, Keanu Reeves as Johnny Silverhand is perfect. I don't think anybody else would made would would have made a better, uh, you know, Johnny Silverhand than Keanu Reeves. Now I don't know a lot about the cyberpunk universe before this game came out. After a game after the game came out, I started reading up a lot about it. Started hearing a lot of YouTube videos and explanations and all that, and I got a little bit more into the tabletop RPG. And I saw like a video on it and how people used to play it. Uh, and Johnny Silverhand's character, his origins. Because it's kind of mentioned here a little bit, but not too much. I uh, got into that for the last couple of days. And today, finally, uh, I haven't had a lot of time to play. But I, I, when I finished the game for the first time, I finished it on the ending where... Johnny takes over your body, uh, well, you give him the control, right? And in the end, you end up uh, in an astronaut station or something, doing like the best heist ever. You're trying to prove something to yourself that Johnny wasn't the one who, who controlled you, and that's why you won. You're the best merc, so you want to do the best, you know, heist I guess so you off the space you put on the helmet Pan Am's in the apartment she's kind of sad she just wants to leave you want to prove something to yourself she doesn't really give a damn about it anyway that's the first ending that I got after that immediately they told me do the ending but do do uh, do the thing again because you can do it you can go reload and, and go to the no turning back mission and toss the pills. I was like, toss the pills. He, he, one of my friends just told me, just toss the pills, just toss them. So I did, and I got that depressing ass ending where you shoot yourself and -da 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 -da, and everything ends and whatever. And after that, I just stopped playing. I didn't have much time. I was gonna do a review on it. And then a couple of weeks later, the, the developers came out with a statement that they were gonna do a January patch and February patch. So I was like, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait for these patches to see what they can fix. Now, I wrote down right here the main problems that I have with the game. When it came to the glitches, because the glitches that I would see that I was seeing in you know in YouTube, people like like game breaking glitches, I didn't have those. My game ran pretty smoothly for the most part, except for these couple of things that I got right here. 
Number one is the cop spawns. My God, dude. Whenever you got in trouble at Night City outside of a mission where you broke the law, you accidentally killed a civilian or something, you know, the cops would spawn, like, right next to you. Like, right here. Or you would just turn around, there's a cop. All of a sudden, there's, like, a full battalion of cops right there. And you're like, how did, how did, what, where did you come from, right? The cop system in this game is not good. It's not good. You know, you, 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 and, and this is the thing, you know. You alert the cops, they come for you, they spawn everywhere all of a sudden. And all you have to do really is just run like a block down the road. And then they, they just stop following you for some reason. So the cop system in this game needs to be fixed. <sighs> That's about pretty bad. Pretty bad. The minimap. Sometimes for some reason when I accepted a quest, the minimap would disappear. And I wouldn't have the little the little pin. I had I I would have to go to the map, look for the pin, and just guide myself there. And just be looking at the map every like couple of seconds just to make sure that I can make it. And then sometime when you were driving, the map would pop, would pop up again. And then you could go where you needed to go. But that was like, eh, it wasn't horrendously bad. But, you know, it's still a glitch that was causing me to lose momentum. Okay. The combat, when it came to the glitches, I didn't have many problems with them. Uh, the combat is, oh, it's decent. It's decent. It's not bad. It just, it doesn't feel very smooth. It feels very janky, especially when you're, you have the Mantis Blades and you're just, it feels, it feels janky. Yeah. It, it did get, this is before the patches. I'm talking before the patches. I'm not talking after patches, before patch. So it was pretty janky combat, and that, and that's pistols and melee weapons, right? And one more thing that was really, really pissing me off was a glitch. This is, I'm sorry, but this was like absurd to me, right? So I'd be driving down the road, da -da 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 -da, the night city music, whatever, right? And I would get a little message pew, right here. Press, you know, the left arrow to view the message. My fucking game would freeze, but everything would keep going. The car would just keep driving. And the city would keep, you know, like, but I wasn't in control. I couldn't, I couldn't do anything. You know, I couldn't, I couldn't do anything. The car would just go until it just crashed somewhere. And then I could see the message, but I would have to find myself, you know, just parking the car, putting the message, waiting like two, four seconds, and then I could read it. Another thing with the messages, the menu screen in this game, the menu screen for the messages in this game is just, bah, ugh, no bueno, no está bueno. They have to fix it, man. Okay? It's the... the So many tabs. Inventory. Stats. Cyberware. Uh, so, you know, shards. You know, all that stuff. It's all like... Bah, bah, bah. It's all there and you can see it all. But when you get into one, like the messages... Like you just want to see uh, a text from Takamura. And then you have to go one by one by one. And then hit Takamura and then... More would go on cars for sale. This, that, and I, I just want to, I just want, I just want to talk to the guy, okay? So the phone systems didn't work very well, mm -hmm. and then, yeah, the driving and answering messages system. No, no, no. Another thing, when it came to the driving, and today when I played it, after the patch, it it works now finally. But before the January and February patch, it would take so long 
for the camera to switch from first person driving to third person driving. I don't like to drive in first person in a game. It just makes me dizzy. I don't like it. And I think the best game to do it was Forza. But I still prefer the third person driving. Unless I have one of those wheels. You know? But, you know, no. And it would take so long at times to just switch from first to third person for the driving. And sometimes I would get to the destination and it would never switch. I was hitting it, hitting it, hitting it, hitting it. And it would never switch. You just have to go in first person, crash into everything. Because the driving, you have to get used to it for this game. It's very janky as well. So when it came to the bugs and glitches, that's pretty much what I had to deal with. It sounds like nitpicking, and it maybe is compared to the things that I saw on YouTube, where people would just get into the car and it would explode, and uh, they would look at the world and everything would just seem blank. I never experienced any of that. And you know, I'm playing. I'm playing on a PS4 Pro. So, you know, it's still last gen, but it's not the first, it's not the slim, and it's not the, like, you know, the first PS4. But I personally thought the game ran pretty smoothly without the patches. I played after the, the January patch, and for some reason, the game got worse when it came to glitches and bugs. I would call my car, and it would come flying at me, and I'm like, what the hell is happening? Why? And the and that's when the world kind of seemed, you know, and I was like, so you did a patch and to fix the game and it fucked it up? So yeah, that's all I was saying, my bad, for the interruption. Uh, I'm not an editor, I'm not a UI designer, I'm not a game developer, but the patch for the, the January patch made the game worse for me. And I played it for like two hours, and I just, I just stopped playing it. I was like, I'm gonna wait for February patch. I'm gonna wait for for February. I bought, I bought the, the collector's edition. It's right here next to me. Uh, I love the collector's edition, the the figure, all the little details, even the normal edition. When I checked. It has so many little, like, like extra content, you know, that they really, really wanted their fan base to have. And that's the thing that's, you know, always separated CD Projekt Red from other developers, that they listen to their fans. Now, CD Projekt Red, the game developers from this game, even though... I had fun with it, and I didn't have any problems with it. They still lied to the whole community, and they had a huge fan base who trusted them, who who loved them, who were like, yeah, CD, yeah, yeah, yeah. And even though, when the game kept getting you know pushed back, you know people were getting mad, sending that threats to the developers, and you know I saw the. What do you say? I saw the, the, you know, the video that the, I think the CEO dropped, you know, with his plans and everything. And, you know, and it's, it's, it's still kind of, they lied. They, plain and simple, they lied. Uh, they, they only let reviewers review the PC version and they couldn't release, uh, you know, their footage to the public. And the game was not ready, even though I had fun with it. I enjoyed it, right? Uh, the game wasn't ready. It wasn't ready on base PS4 and base Xbox. The PC version had a lot of problems also, even though I didn't play it in that version. I only saw the clips. And the, even the PS4 Pro, like I said, like I had these few problems with the game. And it didn't break my immersion. It just ticked me up a bit and there you know 
they're in trouble right now. They're in hot water because, you know, they're getting sued. The fan base is angry. So they're going to have to work a lot to regain the trust of the fans. So it doesn't matter if I personally had fun with the game. I cannot defend nor tell people like, oh, just take it easy. They did their best. They're going to fix it because the game needs to be ready at release. If you release a half-baked game, then there's going to be consequences to it. I saw Jeremy Jones' review for the game and the statement that he says that even though the game has problems, that you can tell that there's so much love put into the game. There were so many good ideas. The game looks great when it works 100%. That, you know, there's real... You can't blame the devs. You can only, you know, blame the suits. You know, the guys who make the calls. The devs have no control. They make the games, but they don't have any control process over it. So you can tell that they really, really wanted to make a good game here. Like, I'm talking like a Witcher-type uh, generation-defying game. And sadly, this isn't it. It's not. It's not even close to what The Witcher has achieved almost seven years since it's been out. And maybe this game, with time and with the patches, and the PS5 version coming out, and all the DLCs, maybe it'll reach what they were trying to get out. But for now, it's not that. But for me personally, I love the story. The only gripe that I have with it is it is too short. Uh, the story, you know, it's you and Johnny Silverhand. You can take that relationship and turn it bad or turn it good. I kept with Johnny pretty good. Full friendship all the way. And if you don't do that, you miss out on a lot of good moments from the game. This game is fast-paced because the story is so short, but it takes its time sometimes to really know you sit down with a type of character and you're like, you talk to him and you're like, yeah, even though we're just talking, it's slow, it's interesting, it's good. I like this. I like it a lot. You know, when Johnny goes to find his, spoilers, when Johnny goes to find his dead body and he's like in a scrap yard and he's like, this is it? I mean, this is the best that could have been done for me? And you, you talk him down and you're like, Hey, you and me, Johnny, we're going to figure it out. And he's like, I, I forgot exactly what he says. He says uh, something like, of all the heads I could have ended up with, I'm glad it's yours, V, something like that. You know, a, a nice moment, heartfelt moment, you know? You know, they, they were amigos de verdad. They were really good friends until the end. Uh, you need to do the side missions to have a complete... You know, for the ending to be completely, you know, like, what you, you need options, to have options. Because there's so many different endings, there's like seven of them. I've only done about five. I did the Johnny ending where he takes over your body. The head, you know, the suicide. The one when you go with Pan Am. The one where you do the astronaut heist. So those are five that I did. If there's more than that, then I don't know. Uh, but I'm pretty sure there is uh, at least like one or two more so yeah there's you know you need to do the side mission so you can have that or you're just going to have the default ending which is doing the Arizaka I didn't do that ending but I did see a video about it it's pretty much you agree to what Hanako says you go with her she I guess puts you in a base but you're still dying no matter what ending you choose v has six months to live you can either stay in the space station or go back home if you go back home i guess i don't know you just go back home or you stay with them and they inject you into soul killer that's what i think i saw that's what i think i remember mm, and yeah that's pretty much it with the with the, with the main story main story pretty much it with the main story so yeah that's pretty much the endings that I know of like I said if there's any other endings I don't know but yeah the game is pretty good for me 
The first time I played the first run of it without any patches was pretty good for me. Janky. It had these problems, but it was still pretty good. I don't know why my lights are going so fast. You see these lights? They got these lights on my room and they're just going ballistic. Just go slow, man. Jesus. So, yeah. I mean, that's pretty much it. Good story. Good characters. The city itself, you know, one of the statements that they said is that they were trying to give us the most realistic city to date. When it worked, sure. When you were in a really populated area, like when you're doing this mission with Takamura and you're like in a festival and you see all these NPCs and everything is moving and and you have to, you know, hack and go stealthy, like when it works 100%, oh yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. You got people eating, you know, uh, you know, you see people on the on the phone, you see cars flying. Like that moment, it worked great and and it flowed really good. But when you're driving around, the city feels kind of empty and kind of hmm, like it's not really alive until I found this one just side mission. Uh, it wasn't really a side mission. It's one of these little icons that says, uh, biz that won't do any, it won't be in any newspapers or anything like that. Uh, so I went into a diner and the, the you know, the bartender's like, do you want anything? And I'm like, sure, give me a, give me a beer or something. And then these guys come on, come in, like right over here. They come in and they're like, give us all your money, blah, blah, blah. And V, you have the option, depending on what level you are, different levels of, of responses. You can be like, hey, calm down. Hey, here's the money. Hey, just get the fuck out of here or I'll shoot you. Uh, do you even know who I am? Uh, I've, I've gone against Arasaka, you know, all these gangs. You're nothing to me. I can destroy you just with one bullet. I could kill everybody right here. You know, you're just talking shit. You're being tough. And they're like, oh, shit. We gotta get out of here, man. Oh, and they just leave, depending, right, on your level. And I'm like, that's cool. You need a lot more of that so the city can feel alive. So I, after that, I just started doing different little side missions. And I found a vending machine that talks. I found a gun that's called Skippy. That's like an AI. Uh, and there's really little side missions that are really, really cool. And even though when you're traveling through the city, there's not many cars or people, so it doesn't feel alive. But the side missions, the little side missions that don't have much notice, really give life to the city. They really pick it up, especially at night, because it's called Night City. So it's like if you go to Las Vegas during the day, it's not the same when you're there at night. This game, this game is meant to play the game at night. And I have two more problems that I want to talk about that I couldn't, I, I can't finish a mission because it's a mission with one of Johnny Silverhand's rock band members and she's like a reporter and she's like, go investigate this thing. I'm like, all right, let me go investigate it. I get to the site, you have to scan the site and there's a terminal there, there's a terminal and you need to hack the terminal, you need to jack in and I can't, it doesn't let me. I saw videos, I'm like, how, let me see if I can search for this mission, and I'm like, okay, so that's what I have to do, and I try to do it, and it doesn't let me, and I found other, other videos about people trying to, like, fix the bug so they can do the mission, so I tried those things, and still couldn't do that mission, so, uh, the only missions I got left as side jobs, a few side jobs and assassinations, which is like, you know, so you can make money. But the side missions that I do have is that side mission. Uh, the one with Misty where you have to find a bunch of graffiti. And I have to fight the last boss in the boxing tournaments. Which is really hard. I tried it like three times and he, he just he just one shot me every single time. I'm like, what the fuck? What, what is this? Let me level up and then I'll come back. But that one mission, I can't do it. Because it's it's just glitched. So after this patch, I'm like, I want to go back there and see if it's fixed. It's not fixed. I can't finish that walkthrough. 
so I can finish that mission. I just, I can't. So that really pissed me off. Of all the things, of all the glitches, because these little things seem like nitpicks compared to what other people were fighting with on their gameplay. And that might be true, because like I said, it was pretty smooth all the way around. These were little things. I would rather have this a hundred times than what I was seeing on YouTube. Uh, but really? Not being able to progress on a mission? And not being able to 100% the game? I have 67 hours, according to the, to the stats. 67 hours and 20-something minutes. And that's including all the endings that I played, the side missions, and the main story. And I can't finish it. The game, I can't 100% it. So, piss me off. It's stupid. Stupid. Okay. So that's it. That's pretty much what I have to say about this game. Was it, was it, you know, worth all the hype for all these years? No, it was not. It was not that game. That genre-defining game. That, you know, <laughs> the, the game that was going to define the next-gen consoles. Sorry, but it wasn't The Witcher 3. And it wasn't The Last of Us Part 1. It does not define this new generation of consoles. Firstly, because it's not even out on these generation of consoles. And secondly, because it's just, it has problems. And I can't defend CD Projekt Red, even though I had fun with the game. If I was, if I was having all the problems that everybody had that I saw on YouTube, it was if it was that bad, IGN gave this game a four. On the on the you know on the console release, I think Angry Joe gave it a a six or a five. Jeremy Johns gave it a good time, no alcohol required. I think I don't remember. I don't know. I don't remember. I would give this game, it was, if I was a harsh critique, a serious reviewer, and or if I had all those problems, I would probably give this game a 5, because even though it does so many things right, so many things right, when it comes to character, story, music, atmosphere, all that, if I had all those problems, it, it would have been a 5. I didn't have all those problems. Uh... On base, how I played it, um, you know, that first two weeks, it's a 7.5. But with the two patches from January and February, I'm glad that I waited. It gets to be an 8 out of 5. I, I, and it gets to be that strong 8.9, the highest 8.9 I could give it. Almost that 9. It can almost be that 9. But I'm going to drop it down to 8.5. That's fair, uh, because the game has problems with with glitches and bugs, and like I said, that fucking mission that I can't finish. And the story itself, even though it's entertaining and it's fast-paced, and I'm glad it's not too long, it's not too short, uh, I personally would have wanted it to be a few hours longer, and they would have fleshed out more characters like Mama Wells and Misty, because they're there. But you don't really have side missions with them. A few of them, but you don't really interact. After Jackie dies, and I don't know. You're, you don't really get to see Mama Wells much, except on the funeral of Misty, Vic. There's so many Ripper Doctors that you could go to any single one and they all have the same product. They didn't do everything in the game that they were going to do, that they were like, yeah, we have all this. This is everything that we have available. Yeah, this is going to be our game. They didn't They, they didn't do everything they, were, they said they were going to do. And maybe that comes out later, but your game is already out now, and you didn't do it. So, I'm going to drop it down to an 8.5 out of 10. It has the potential to be a 9.5 if they fix the glitches. If they fix them. But since the story is not as good as The Witcher, which, which, in difference with The Witcher, they really focused more on 
let's say, what's the correct word here? When you did a side mission in The Witcher, it would affect your main storyline. But it wouldn't just affect the ending of the game, it would affect a lot of things. Who would be remaining the kings? Uh, the endings of the game that you would have gotten. The people that you get to save at the end and how many people that you care about are left. Things like, like that Jarl with the red hat, if I remember correctly, that you were supposed to save his baby. You can decide to save it or kill it or return his soul to a more, you know, how do I say it, peaceful place. You have to find his wife. You can decide to save her or let her die or she becomes like a ghoul of some sort and he can kill himself or stay alive and those things affect every little decision you made in The Witcher affected the ending and I got so depressed the first time that I played it because I had the worst ending where Ciri dies and Geralt is just depressed so they're gonna do the new PS5 version of The Witcher 3 and I'm not gonna buy it because I already have The Witcher 3 I'm not buying it I don't like remasters I don't I, I, I don't Unless it's built from the ground up, like Crash Bandicoot, which was in the 90s. And then they were like, oh yeah, we're going to bring Crash to the PS4. And from the ground up, it's like a whole new game. You're like, oh man, this, this is awesome. But, you know, they're doing a lot of remasters lately. Like, the new Mass Effect is going to get a remastered. I'm just done with remastered. Or even like Resident Evil 2. Resident Evil 2, they, it came out in the 90s or in the 2000s. And they built it from the ground up for the PS4, and it's awesome, that's a fucking remastered, that's, but I saw the Mass Effect one, and it's, oh, uh, remastered in 4K, it looks exactly the same, it only looks a little more, like, detailed, like, a little bit on the suits, and, and the, and the sets, but everything else looks the same, stop it with the remasters, that has nothing to do with this game, but anyway, so yeah, final, re final, 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 final rating, 8.5 out of 10. It's never going to be a 10 unless you continue with the story. Uh, if you just want to do DLC inside of Night City with different characters, and it's never going to be a 10. It could be a 9.5 if you fix it and, and release more free stuff. And I love the collector's edition. I loved it, loved it, loved it. So it's an 8.5 for me, 8.5 out of 10.